So in a previous video, we made a pendulum out of a number of polygon primitives. Uh, in this video, we're going to approach the problem a little bit differently. Uh, this time, we have a single mesh that comprises our whole pendulum, uh, the base and the pendulum uh, with the weight at the bottom. Uh, so we need to approach this differently. We need to create a skeleton for it. We need to create a series of joints for it and then bind it just as we would do uh, with a character. So this will be a great opportunity to look at some very simple uh, rigging concepts. Uh, before I begin, one thing I would like to mention though is that I've already taken the time to clean up this mesh I've named it and I've made sure that I don't have any scale information on here. I froze the transforms. I also don't have any history on here. I deleted history. This will just make working with this a whole lot easier if you do those things before you get started on the next step, which is creating a skeleton and then binding your mesh to that skeleton. Now, the um, the joints that we want to create, we can find them here. There's this drop-down uh, where it's currently set to modeling. I'm going to change that to rigging because that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be rigging up this pendulum. So once I switch it over to rigging, we've got some different selections up here like skeleton, skin, deform, and so on. Uh, we will go to skeleton and pick create joints. Now, I want to show you a couple things uh, before I actually uh, do this for real. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a joint here, uh, which would represent the base. And then I'm going to just start you know, clicking and putting joints where I think maybe I need them, uh, where I need the pendulum to bend from. And I always like to do a, a last joint here at the end of the chain that in fact is not going to be uh, animated, but just helps point this joint in the right direction, the, the joint previous to it. So this could be the skeleton for my pendulum here. Um, I'm gonna move it over to the side though, just so that we can take a look at it. We're going to see that we are gonna have a little bit of a problem with it. Uh, if I open up my outliner, and I expand on my joint chain here, you'll see I have a series of joints here. Uh, if I select uh, these joints and I rotate, uh, you'll notice it's actually not rotating quite the way I want. And that has to do with my inexact placement of these joints, that when I was placing them, uh, I, I wasn't placing them exactly lined up. I, they're more, more or less lined up, but not exactly. Um, one way I could easily fix that would be to freeze the transforms. You don't always want to freeze the transforms on joints. You have to be cautious about that. In this case, it won't hurt anything. Uh, if I select that top joint and I go to Modify, Freeze Transformations, now if I grab those joints and I rotate it, it'll it'll rotate in a fashion that will work much better for, uh, for our pendulum. I'm going to delete that though, uh, and I'm going to approach this a little bit differently. Uh, I'm gonna go once again to skeleton, create joint, and I'm going to create a single joint, and I'm going to put it right at the, um, right in the middle of my world space. Um, I'll show the grid so you can see this. It doesn't have to be right in the middle of the world space, but I want to I want to make it centered at a minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and just place this joint in here, and then I'm going to press Enter, and I'll call this uh, the base. It'll be the base of uh, of my pendulum here. Why did I create this single joint without creating the chain? Well, uh, the reason being uh, that when I create joints and I click and then I click again to create a chain, this joint will automatically, when I create joints, point at the next one down the chain. 
as will this. This one's now pointing at this joint here, and so on. So what it's doing is basically affecting the orientation of it. You can see how uh, the selection, the rotator uh, selector is oriented so that it points down the joint. Very convenient at times because I get this nice rotation going down the length of it. But if I were to freeze the transforms on it, then I no longer have that rotation that goes down the length of it. But for this first joint, I actually prefer to have it oriented to the world. That's why I created a single joint and then pressed Enter. I'm now going to create the joints for the pendulum itself. I'll go to Skeleton, Create Joints again. And I'll place one here. I'm holding down X on my keyboard uh, so that I can snap it to the grid. Uh, that'll place it there uh, on the grid here. Um, and then I'll create my additional links down or additional joints down the uh, length of the pendulum here. So I'm going to hold down Shift. And by holding down shift, you'll see it actually locks it in that axis. Even if I move my mouse to the left or right, I'm bringing it straight down, which is uh, what I want to do. Uh, and then I just need to think about how far I want these spaced. Uh, perhaps I'll put this about here. Still holding down shift. I'll place some more joints on here. And I'll place one here at the kind of the base of the weight here. And then, like I said earlier, I like to place one more joint that uh, helps orient this last one here. Uh, and then I press Enter. I could, in fact, get rid of this joint here. I merely uh, created it just so that the previous joint would have something to point at. Um, so it's actually not a bad idea to delete it at this point. Well, no, you know what? It's better to keep it there because of skinning. This will help with our skinning. So we'll leave that joint there, actually. OK, now that we have this chain, I'm going to, I'm going to rename these. Uh, instead of calling it joint one, two, three, and so on, perhaps a more logical naming convention might uh, work better. So I think I'll name them very similarly to uh, the one that we created with polygon primitives. So I'm going to go to uh, Modify and Search and Replace Names. Everywhere where, the, um, where it's called Joint, I'm going to replace it with Link. And we'll, we'll put this little space in between. So um, Apply. And now we've got link underscore one, link underscore two, and so on, right on down the chain. If I were going above 10, I should call this zero one so that it would be zero two, zero three, and so on. Uh, but because we're not going over 10, it's fine not to have that zero before these numbers. Okay, now that we have uh, that accomplished, I'm going to middle mouse drag that underneath the base. And here, more or less, is my rig. For, uh, for my pendulum. If we want to quickly test it out, you'll notice that it rotates nicely. Actually, if I select that last link, uh, oh, even now it's still working okay. Sometimes it won't when you select that last joint in your chain. So the next thing I'm going to do is skin my mesh to the skeleton. And what I need to do is select my mesh and select the root of my skeleton. Go to Skin, Bind Skin. We can open up the options and just maybe make sure that we reset them back to the default. Uh, some of these fields here indicate how many bones could potentially influence any one vertex. Right now it's set to five, which is kind of high. Uh, we could certainly get away with three for this particular uh, model. Some game engines uh, have a, uh, a maximum that you can go up to and won't accept a number like five. So 
on the off chance I want to bring this into a game engine, I'm going to uh, bring that number down to four and I will apply. Now let's test out our bind. So if I select the base, it moves nicely, everything moves with it. And if I select these individual links here and I rotate them, well, that deformation doesn't really look very good. Uh, we could test some of the other links here and just kind of go down the chain and test them. And you can see what's happening here. What's happening is that our skin weights uh, need some refining. Down here, they look pretty okay, actually. They're not uh, behaving too poorly down here. Uh, down at the bottom, though, if we want this to look rigid, then maybe that's not really behaving very nicely. So let's go uh, work on the skin weights and find out what's happening here. So uh, in this next step, you're going to really see why it's very valuable to have useful and logical names for the joints in your skeleton. I'm going to select my mesh. I'm going to go to skin paint skin weights and open up its tool setting. And here you can see that we can select our individual joints and you can see how they're influencing the mesh. In this case, the base is for the most part affecting uh, this base here, which we want to be rigid. But the problem, the reason why we're getting that weird deformation earlier is because link one is influencing it Link 2 is still influencing the base, although minutely. Uh, link 3 is affecting it. Link 4 is not. Okay, so these, these three links here are influencing the base, so then when these joints bend, they actually deform the base, and we need to eliminate that. We want all the weight on the base to be applied to the base joint. Now, these, number, these, um, these colors here indicate... Uh, influence. So the colder the color, the less that joint is influencing that area. But even a minute amount of influence sometimes can make the bind look bad. Uh, the warmer the uh, color here, the more it's being influenced. So if we were to select link one, you can see that actually link one here is still very strongly affecting the base. We need to eliminate that. Let's select the base here and I have it set to replace right now, and I have it set to opacity of one and value of one, meaning that when I paint on this with base selected, it's going to take the weights and apply them 100% to that first joint, which is exactly what we want. Uh, now, I can change the size of my brush using the B key, and we'll go ahead and start painting that weight. White means it's influenced 100%, and that's exactly what we want. That's exactly what we want from that uh, base joint. As I get uh, closer in here, maybe I want to make my brush a little bit smaller. And that's probably good. Let's go ahead and test it out. So now, if I grab uh, that joint there and I rotate, you'll see I'm still having a problem. Look at that. There's still a stray vertex there being affected by one of these joints. I don't know which one, uh, or it could even be multiple joints. Uh, so I'm going to put it back here like that, and we'll see if we can fix that. Uh, I'll go to Skin, Paint Skin Weights again, and look at that. There it is. There it is there. Uh, let's see, it's still being affected by link one. Uh, it's being a little bit affected by link two still, even being affected a little bit by link three. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll select that base and we'll just paint that influence away and test it again. And that's looking pretty good. 
The other area that obviously wasn't quite working yet was uh, this weight on our pendulum. So I'll go to skin, paint skin weights again, and we'll see what's influencing it. So I didn't name any joint uh, weight on here, but it's going to be this one here, link seven. And again, we probably don't want you know, some of these other links like link six affecting it. It's primarily link six that's giving us the problem here. Uh, the fact that it's weighted partly to link eight doesn't really matter all that much because it's not being animated, but we're gonna go ahead and select link seven. And once again, I'm just going to paint uh, the weight 100% onto that joint. And I think that should be pretty good. Let's uh, test it out and see how that looks when I rotate this. Yep, that looks like it's working. Uh, if we want to test out more of our rig here, you can see that I think it's working pretty well. Usually these areas that we have here are pretty forgiving. Um, it's kind of nice actually to have the weight more distributed among uh, the different joints. It'll probably give us a little bit of a uh, smoother uh, result. But I think more or less that this is ready to be animated. Now I'm going to basically animate it the same way I animated the one uh, where we created it using polygon primitives and simply created a hierarchy. Uh, the fact that these are joints, it's just another kind of hierarchy. So in this case, uh, because we haven't added any other kind of rigging to it, it's really no different. So I'm going to speed up the video at this point as I animate it, uh, because if you want to know more about how I animated it, you can watch that earlier video. So I've finished animating it, and here is a play blast of my animation. If you're interested in rigging and animating characters, this is actually not a bad starting exercise to prepare you for that. As a simpler example, it's a good exercise to get used to the tools and techniques. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.